Congregation, the text for the sermon this morning is verse 7 of Jeremiah 8. And we'll read that verse again, verse 7, Jeremiah 8. And there we read the word of God as follows. Even the stork in the heavens knows her times, and the turtle doves swallow and crane keep the time of their coming. But my people know not the rules of the Lord. Beloved congregation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Last summer, as my wife and I walked around the pond close to where we live, we, we watched a pair of Canada geese raise a family. The eggs hatched, there were six goslings, and we watched those little goslings grow up, first following their parents around the pond, father and mother goose, very protective of their young. You couldn't get close to them. And then they walked out on the grass, eat the grass, more and more under parental supervision, of course. Then they began to swim through the pond and then even fly. So amazing to watch them those goslings grow to maturity, and their parents, too, how protective they are. And finally, last fall, the parents and the offspring flew away with other migrating geese in the typical V formation, common in the skies in the fall. Boys and girls know that, too. You look up and you see them flying in V formation, flying south. How do they know when and why to migrate, and where to migrate. Well, the Lord says through the prophet Jeremiah that his people need to learn from migrating birds. There are examples for them, for all, for them then, but also for us today to learn from. So let's pay attention to three spiritual lessons taught by migrating birds. First, they know when they need to migrate. Secondly, they know why they need to migrate. And thirdly, they know where they need to migrate to. First, migrating birds know when they need to go. The first chapters of the book of Jeremiah congregation are full of warnings against the backslidings of the people of Judah. They had they had generally left God's ways. They ended up worshiping and serving other gods, especially the leadership too. Through the prophet Jeremiah, the Lord in chapter 8 rebukes the people for their lack of repentance and returning to him. Even though they have already experienced something of God's judgments against them at the time, they remained unrepentant. They didn't examine themselves and, and ask themselves, why, what do I need to change? They did, not, they did not give up those other gods, nor turn away from their sins. And, and you have to think then that not long before the prophet spoke the words of this chapter 8 of, of Jeremiah, Jerusalem had been surrounded by the armies of the king of, of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, besieged, but the Babylonians had not destroyed the city at that time because the king, Zedekiah, had made a deal with him that he would be the vassal of Nebuchadnezzar, serve him, and give him tribute. And so Nebuchadnezzar had gone back with his army to Babylon Took, taking along 10,000 captives. We believe that Daniel, the prophet Daniel, was among those captives. And all the blacksmiths, all the blacksmiths in Jerusalem and Judah. Why the blacksmiths, you might ask? Well, that was so that the people of Judah and Jerusalem wouldn't be able to make weapons of war. 
So the per people had certainly felt that God's threats of judgment against sin was not idle. They were not idle threats, and yet, yet they did not repent and turn to the Lord their God. And the Lord's taken aback at that. He asked via Jeremiah, verse 4, when men fall, do they not rise again? Don't they get up? If somebody turns away, does he not return? If, if, if you go down a wrong path, won't, won't you retrace your steps and go the other way again? If you realize, oh, I'm, I'm going wrong here? Well, then the Lord continues, verse 5, Why then has this people turned away in perpetual backsliding? They hold fast to deceit. They refuse to return. Slowly on, they were sliding away from him in the relationship with him. And so he's upset that Judah and Jerusalem don't repent. There was no sorrow for sin and no breaking with the worship of other gods, no breaking with their sin and their deceit. They continued to forsake the Lord their God and his ways, which he had so clearly outlined for them. Like a horse, he even compares it to a, like a horse plunging headlong into battle, not thinking about the consequences of where he's going, just not thinking, going ahead. And that leads right up to our text then, verse 7. Even the stork in the heavens knows her times, and the turtle dove, swallow and crane, keep the time of their coming. In other words, migrating birds know when it's time to head south. They take the opportunity to leave before winter comes. And they know exactly when they need to go. And that's exactly, that's actually a wonder, right? That they know without fail. Let's get together and migrate. God-given instinct tells them when it's time. But, the Lord says in the last part of that text, Behold, my people know not the rules of the Lord. My people know not the rules of the Lord. They had, they had the word of God in the Torah. They had the prophets. They had the temple, temple worship with the altar, the foreshadowing of the Lord Jesus Christ where the offerings were being offered according to the ceremonial law. And yet, this person, these, this people, didn't know when it was time to turn around, to leave what they were doing, to ignore God's will and way. They didn't know that it was time to repent. And the Lord uses those migrating birds to put his people to shame. The stork, the turtle dove, the swallow, and the crane. There are four types of, of migratory birds which are found in the Middle East today. Every year, thousands of those types of migratory birds make a stopover in Israel as they fly south. They stay there, they fatten up there, then they go further south. And Israel, you see, lies in the middle of a, of a very important migration flyway for birds going from Europe to places farther south, like East Africa. And in Canada, we also have major flyways for migratory birds, such as Point Pelee, where all the bird watchers go. Millions of birds land for a while on their way south in the fall or north in the spring. And they all have the same characteristic. They know the times. They know when to leave, and when to rest on the way as they migrate, they first come together in flocks of hundreds or thousands. No one knows how they, they agree that they're going to come together like that before, they're, before they migrate. But they do. And they seem to wait for each other. And then they wait for the right moment for all of them to leave together. And they know when to stop in order to rest on the way. And some of them fly thousands of kilometers in order to leave the cold in the fall 
and to arrive at the warmer south at the right time. It's said that they have some kind of biological clock that gives them the right times. We know that it's a God-given clock. In the summer, they build their nest, they have their young, and then in the fall, they leave for the south in order to escape the cold of the winter months. So the migrating birds think, now it's the time to go. The people of Judah felt God's judgment in the coming of the Babylonians. They were warned by the prophet Jeremiah. He proclaimed, if you don't repent now, Jerusalem will be completely destroyed. And to such an extent, he says, verse 3 of this chapter, that death will be preferred to life. And still the people of Judah didn't say, time for us to repent. We need to repent now while we still can. They didn't make use of the time. The migrating birds were wiser than they were. So congregation, we're shown in the text that God gives specific times and opportunities to repent. And repentance should be a way of life for Christians. You can think of the passage we read from Luke 19 where the Lord Jesus wept over Jerusalem too. And there he said, would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace, but now they're hidden from your eyes for the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they won't leave one stone on another, he adds to because you did not know the time of your visitation, he says. See, the long-promised messianic king had come to Jerusalem, and he had clearly proclaimed the gospel of God's grace to the people. That gospel had come to them with the urgent call to repent and to believe in the Savior. But as Jesus said, they did not know the time of their visitation. Migrating birds know the time of their coming, but the Jews in Jesus' days did not know the time was there for repentance and turning to the Savior. You see, there are times in which the Lord gives people together or, or also individually when he gives them opportunity to examine themselves and to seek him and to repent from sinful habits and practices in their lives. Things that they don't even maybe think about anymore. Times, there are times during which the Lord appears to deal with us in a special way. And that can be a time of sorrow at the death of a loved one. or time of suffering or trouble, which the Lord gives us to deal with. And then I have to think of a time like now, during this COVID-19 pandemic, when everything and everyone is affected, especially now with the knockdown and the inability to come together for worship. And life in general has slowed down then we can see these times as times when the Lord, as it were, shakes us awake and calls us to focus on living close to him again. We were taking things for granted. We've been so busy with and for ourselves. We were consumed by the media so that it drew us away from the Lord and from the gospel of life. And then it's a time to ask ourselves, how important is church to me really? And how important is the Bible for me really? And more importantly, how important is my Savior really for my life? And am I really truly living for him? See, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, with this pandemic, our God gives us the time and the opportunity 
to reflect on how devoted we really are to him. It's a time for repentance. He shakes us. And it calls us to examine ourselves, to find any willful way in us, in ourselves, and to repent of those willful ways and to live close to him, closer and closer. Close to him for the first time or maybe again. So the question is now, are we as wise as the migrating birds? Do we make use of the time the Lord gives us now to grow in our dependence on him and our living for him and our love for him? The migrating birds know the time and they take the opportunity they have to fly south. And they also know why they need to do that. And that brings us to the second part of the message this morning. The birds in the text also know why they need to migrate. Why do those birds migrate? Think of the migration in the fall here in Ontario. The birds have it good here, don't they? They have enough to eat, they build their nests, raise their young. This is their home, right? The fall weather is still nice, still enough to eat. We had a beautiful November. Why leave? Well, those birds know instinctively that once the winter sets in, they know this beforehand, once the winter sets in, there will not be anything to eat anymore. And they will starve. And they also know they're not going to be able to survive the cold of the winter. They, need, they know they need to leave or they're going to perish. Congregation, that's how we have to see it too. Either we repent and we repent or we perish eternally. Think of what the Lord Jesus said to those who told him about the Galileans Pilate had killed at the altar and the people who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them in Luke 13. That was a time too. It was thought that those people had maybe committed worse sins than others because they had died so tragically. And Jesus says there, do you think that, that those, those people were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Those tragic events were a call to repentance for all who saw and heard about those things. And we all need to see the time we're experiencing now too as a call of the Lord to repent of the remaining sin in our lives. We see the statistics of how many people have perished, have died. Otherwise, we perish spiritually and eternally. Think again of those migrating birds in the fall. They know their times. They know when they need to leave, also why they need to fly south. They know winter is coming. There won't be seeds or insects or frogs or fish to eat. There'll be ice on the ponds. They're not equipped with the downy feathers that keep them from freezing. It's, it's fly or die. And so they go south. Congregation, we also know that winter is on the way, right? When death will knock on our door and we'll have to give account of ourselves before God. Or when the Lord Jesus returns. And we know the day will come when we will stand before God. And what do we need to do? Do we use the time and the opportunity now to make right things right with God in Christ? Do we hear the call to repentance in the word and in what's happening around us in the world today, which the Lord has brought about? Because that's also a call to repentance. The danger is real for us too. The danger 
of the winter of eternal death. If we leave this life without being hid with Christ in God, if we have not prayerfully prepared ourselves through living faith in Christ to stand before our maker, then we will perish forever. As the Lord says through Jeremiah, we need to take our cue from the migrating birds. They know the time and they fill up with food and take to flight. They know the danger of winter, the coming winter, with its cold and its frozen fields and waters. Let's face it, congregation, we all need to regularly be shaken up and made aware of the danger, don't we? There is a time coming when we, we need to stand before God. And we have to regularly examine ourselves to see how things stand with us, with our souls. We need to be reminded of what the Apostle Paul writes, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. In other words, examine yourself and honestly ask yourself, how intimately do I live with Christ? Is there in me the dying of the old nature and a coming to life of the new? Think of how we confess that in Lord's Day 33, connection with true repentance and conversion of man. It is to grieve with heartfelt sorrow that we have offended God by our sin and more and more to hate it and flee from it. And on the other hand, heartfelt joy in God through Christ and a love and delight to live according to the will of God in all good works. And notice the heartfelts there. Daily repentance from the heart. Oh, it's possible you think, well, I'm a, I'm a believer. I read from the Bible. I pray. I'm serious about keeping God's commandments. I don't really need to repent. When I come before God, he'll see all the things I've done in his name and I'll be acceptable to him, I feel. Well, the Lord Jesus warned against only the outward show of religiosity in that Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6. He said, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. We need to practice righteousness, but not in order to be seen by men because our hearts, but because our hearts belong to our Savior from sin, Jesus Christ. Only with that heartfelt love for him will there be reward from God. And so you realize that repentance is needed, ongoing repentance, because we so easily seek the reward of acknowledgement by other people, right? Rather than the treasure there is in Christ in the end. So the migrating birds teach us the necessity of ongoing repentance. We need to be reconciled with God time and again. Embrace Jesus Christ or we perish. And that brings us to the last part of the sermon. Migrating birds know where they need to migrate to. Congregation, it's amazing, but migrating birds know exactly where they need to go when they fly south. And they go to the same place where their ancestors have been migrating to for over generations and generations of birds. And many return to the exact forest or barn or swamp every year again. They go back. They know where they need to go and they know the way there. Even the young birds that are born here and have never made the journey south, they know. Apparently, they know the way. How in the world is that possible? It's a mystery to researchers. How do, the, how do those birds know the way? Sometimes thousands of kilometers. 
How do they find their way without fail? It's been suggested they have some kind of homing radar or they sense the Earth's magnetic fields or so, but ultimately, <clears throat> there's only one answer to the question. God, the creator and upholder of all things, he has put that in them. He leads them to the place they need to be and teaches them not only when to migrate and why to migrate, but teaches them where to migrate to. It's by his hand they know where to fly when they migrate. <clears throat> Congregation, it's ultimately also God's hand that leads his children to, to safety in Christ. His hand that leads them to faith and repentance. His hand leads them to Christ. Think of what the Lord Jesus said, John 6, 44 and 45. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Actually, the word is drags him. And I will raise him up at the last day. He will not perish. It's written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. So God leads his people to Christ by means of the Spirit who works via the gospel. And he shows them the wonderful safety and the life there is in Jesus' wounds and in his atoning death and in his life. So that they say with the prophet Isaiah, he was wounded for my transgressions and the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And there's complete safety for sinners in Christ alone congregation and whoever knows his or her sins from the word and knows Christ from the gospel will know, will know where they need to flee to in order to escape the cold winter of eternal condemnation, right? As they listen to and as they read the Bible, the more and more hunger and thirst for the salvation there is in Christ. And do you recognize that in yourself, that you're more hungry and thirsty all the time for what Christ has achieved for you? That you more and more long to be fully united with Christ? Oh, it's not always an easy journey, that migration. Migrating birds face a lot of dangers on the way. And that's how it is with believers too. Satan does his best to throw us off course, to ensnare us in certain sins, catch us in a net and frustrate us, dim the sound of the gospel in our ears and in our hearts. He sounds a different gospel. He sounds a conditional gospel that says you need to make yourself better before you can go to Christ. But then the Spirit disables all those ideas with reassurances and encouragement by means of the gospel of grace. Hearing and studying the gospel of grace. It's actually the Lord Jesus' voice that you hear in the gospel. And he calls you to him Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When he shows how, how ready he is to receive and to welcome sinners when they come to him, how can you not go to him? Turn from everything else and go to him. When he shows the gospel, in the gospel, the, the, the power of his atoning blood, and the all-sufficiency of his sacrifice for all our sins, then we know where we need to go to again, don't we? Then we know where there is refuge from the just judgment of God that is coming, and when we'll actually go, then we'll actually go there too, won't we? We'll seek our salvation outside of ourselves in Jesus Christ, in him alone. And then he'll make sure that we arrive at the destination too. God leads his own unfailingly to eternal life in Christ. Birds have a lot to endure as they migrate. Wind, storm, predators. 
And for migrating birds, it's true that not all reach their destination. But that can't be said of those who are God's children who seek their life in Christ alone. Listen to what Jesus said in John 10 in connection with his sheep. My father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. Congregation, the Lord our God, our creator, made the migrating birds, the stork, the turtle dove, the swallow, and the crane. And he made them examples for the people of Judah and Jerusalem and also for us today. The Lord had to say of Judah, but my people know not the rules of the Lord. And the migrating birds are wiser than my people. They don't take the time and the opportunity I give them to repent. They don't hear my call in the events that are happening. What about us, brothers and sisters? Do we make use of the time and the opportunity we have now when the Lord has brought this COVID-19 crisis on the world, when everything has slowed down and we're isolated, do we take the time to examine ourselves, to think of our lives in the light of the gospel? What do we need to change? Do we use the time to repent from the heart? Those birds know what time it is. And they know that if they don't migrate, it'll be their end because winter is on the way. And do we take that to heart too, spiritually? Because only in Christ is there a future for us. Now is the appropriate time. Now is the day of salvation. Amen.